uh, thanks for coming to my show. Uh, appreciate you coming down. It was really nice to have you drive all the way from Tacoma, the heartland of America. And uh, we've known each other for a long time and you see my artwork and see my artistic development. And so, you know, just uh, wanted to invite you over to see, talk to you and visit with you and, and show you my place and show you my studio and talk to you about art. And um, so, how are you doing? What's, what's going on? I'm doing great. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, when I think about when I first met you, which is really when I first met your art. It was 2001, so it was 21 years ago. And I was uh, jurying the Coca Annual, back when there was a Coca Annual. And, you know, I remember seeing the work, it was in slide form, right? So you've got hundreds of slides, you sort of have to go through this, you have to decide who is gonna sort of bring that sort of uh, interesting work. It's a, it's a fool's errand in a sense, but I remember being really struck with the energy of the work that you did. That time it was very abstract, um, not that it's representational now, but it was sort of more color field type painting. And it, there was just something about it that really struck me. And I remember feeling like this is somebody whose work, I don't, I don't know him from Adam, never met him before, but even in slide form, there was something really special about the work that you did. And, you know, so you were part of that show. And I think, you know, when I came to Seattle for the opening and have that conversation with the artists and, and, um, and actually, I think I even helped install the show because this was Coca back in the day. Right. But, um, you know, we met then. And I remember that that passion that I saw in your work really, uh, you know, was just embodied in you as an artist. So I think that's something that I've really always respected about you as an artist is that you throw everything into the work that you do. And, you know, the, the fact that 21 years later, the work that you're doing, you may think as the artist, that is completely different from what you were doing 21 years ago. But the reality is that artists really tend to, if they're really true to their art, there tends to be a pretty consistent theme. And I would imagine that if I saw that work now and looked at the work you're doing now, I would see a pretty continual thread. That said, I know you've been doing stripes for a while. We've had these conversations about your stripes from early on. And, you know, I find that same kind of excitement and rigor in, in these works. There's a really interesting connection that you have. It's sort of what I call that um, controlled chaos, right? So there's, a, there's that energy that is apparent in this work, and then, and then there's the control that you bring to it as well, that I think really makes the work, or manifests itself really strongly in the work. So, um, and I, and I also remember when you started getting into resin that you sort of called them jewels boxes. Like there was something really special and shiny and, and attractive and seductive and it is a medium that is super seductive, no doubt about it. But when you can also bring in the, 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 the rigor of the conceptual or visual part of it, it, it makes it something different. It doesn't just become the slick kind of uh, shiny object. There's, there's meat within that. Right, so you know, I see that in this work. There's a um, the chaos, right, that happens in the background, the control that you bring with the stripes, but then also sort of the layers and layers and layers of resin, which is a um, very. It, it takes a lot of patience, right? You think about the energy that goes into art, and you think about that sort of intuitive Jackson Pollock kind of the splash things on. But then there's this other part of it which is very patient and controlled and takes time and you've got to let it sit and you've got to put more layers on it and you know i think all of that comes together it's not an easy thing to package so i've really liked sort of the evolution of the work that you've done never seen this painting before until today um, but i think all of that's embodied in the work that you've done here um, and you know the 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 irony is when you and I, before the cameras were rolling, we were talking about art in general, and I was talking about Barnett Newman and that anecdote at, at MoMA um, with, with the, the child and his father looking at a Barnett Newman, which was basically just a striped out of canvas, and, and having the child say, you know, I could do that, uh, dad, and the dad saying, yes, you could, son. And I was so angry about it um, until I sort of, you know, part of me was recognizing the history behind that. 
and the, the sort of the powerful conceptual background to that, all of which is true. But at the end of that, there is very little soul, right? And I think as a very formal artist, and I'm not comparing you per se to Barnett Newman, but I'm thinking about the idea of a stripe, and I'm thinking about how different that work was, which was again sort of a formal statement that really wasn't meant to be passionate, it really wasn't meant to sort of connect to you in a very sort of uh, in, in, intuitive, deep down level. It was meant to be sort of a, a intellectual curiosity. This is a thing that is playing colors and, and contrast, and it was so unusual and still kind of new, and that was timely. But the work that you're doing here is sort of is, is very passionate and um, and has a lot of soul to it. So I love that about that. I love how it it resonates. I love the depth. You can't tell that from here because you're seeing a two-dimensional view of it. The cameras are. But if you walk around this painting, if you really look in or to look into it, you would see the very different layers and how the resin really does build upon itself and creates. Um, just a sort of a synergy, you know, as you walk around it, you see lots of different things happen. So I've talked a lot. What's your response? No, I appreciate your point of view. I mean, you have a lot of experience in the art world and from both New York and also the Northwest. And so you've seen a lot of artwork and you've seen my artwork for these 21 years. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to uh, get your observation or your uh, impression of, you know, uh, this space, my, my career, wh wh where I've come to, um, and doing these stripe paintings for these uh, uh, 21 years and, and other abstract paintings and, and paintings in general. Um, you know, what, you know, what does that, what is the gestalt of that, of that accumulation of, of information? Where do we find ourselves now? Where do we find, where do I, where do you find my art now? And, you know, how does that construct the future or, or have a premonition of, of ideas in the future? And, um, you know, we're all faced with impermanence and death, with all the dramatic um, events of our time. Um, how does art and how does my art specifically uh, inform this dimension of time and space? Deep questions, Alan Fuller. Um, well, what I can say is that I think you know you are an, an endlessly restless artist, and and that's a good thing. Um, you have you know you pivot, you you dive deeply into you know, new forms. Um, but as I said, there's a there's always a continual thread through the work that you do, which I really appreciate. So it may be that the towers that you do are, are you know feel like it's going to be the end all, be all. That is where you are now. Um, but maybe it's not, but you're not afraid to go there. And so I feel like there is something really wonderful about the way that you charge into the next iteration of, of the body of work that you want to do. And you're, you're unafraid of, of where it's going to go. Um, and uh, I think almost always there's something really successful about that, even if it ends up being you know, a dead end of sorts, right? Maybe you don't do this body of work anymore. You continue to do another one or create a new one or expand upon something else that you've done. But that, that your restless energy really contributes to the body of work that you do in general. So where does it go? Uh, um, end of life issues, all that stuff. I don't see that being an issue for you. I think that you're just going to continue to explore and invent and create as you should. And, you know, I've had lots of conversations, and I shared this with you earlier today. I have lots of conversations with artists who's, who think, you know, the work that I do is, uh, you know, uh, really different. Like one body of work to another feels very different to me. I don't really know. I sort of feel aimless, right? And I think the reality is that that your work is not aimless at all. Like there's a there's a strong focus in what you do, and I think that you've grown as an artist throughout. Right? I don't feel like your best work is 10 years ago. Your best work is 20 years ago. I think 20, 21 years ago when I first saw your work, you were you were starting to figure it out. I think, um, and I don't know how you feel that way, but I feel that the work that I saw then was was raw. It had lots of energy. But you were starting to come into your own, and that 
in the years since then, you have really developed a much more sort of mature approach to how you make art. Um, I think the results have been uh, strong always, and I think that it's always going to be growing. I just don't see you as somebody that's ever going to say, okay, that's it, I'm done. Or that's going to say, okay, I only want to ever do this one kind of painting for the rest of my career, because that's not who you are. So keep on keeping on. I appreciate that yeah, positive, optimistic perspective. And it's, uh, it's great to hear someone with your level of experience and depth and knowledge of the art world to kind of um, articulate some understanding. And some, I think time is important when you, when you know someone's trajectory or path or their, their, uh, what they've gone through. You talk about the kind of more raw energy and then and and the balance of refinement and and something that that marriage of, of some kind of the energy and refinement or deliberateness or you know uh, something that is more uh, engineered um, you know I, I'm this this has been a big break from for me for for you know, getting this new studio and, and making this um, geographical move, but also just, you know, a, a almost a totality of experience is different. I mean, uh, what we've gone through um, and, you know, in history and all this, but my personal history has, has been, inf I think, informed, but I, I, I like what you were saying about this thread. I think I understand that um, I'm still me, and, I, and, and I'll still probably, I'm kind of a stubborn person and I'll still be making that same kind of work and mining that, that vein. And, but hopefully I can take some of those elements and put them together more harmoniously or, or, or skillfully or have uh, that information translate better or communicate to the audience in a, in a more eloquent or, or savvy way. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm hoping that that there'll be some kind of magical, uh, you know, end, end product. Like they'll, they'll be like the promised land of, of what happens. But I mean, I guess it was always the promised land in a sense, right? Well, it's hard. To, I mean, you could be in the promised land now, right? When you're too deep into it. You don't know, right? And I think, you know, the one thing that I've never thought that you've done is try to overthink things so that you were trying to do that thing that you think is going to be your, you know, money ticket, right? Like that's going to be that thing that's going to suddenly, like, you know, I think we, I think all artists who need to, to make living out of their art, like they can't help but think about that a little bit. But still, I think the work that you have done has always been true to yourself and that you wouldn't dive into something with the emotion and the attachment that you have to it without fe feeling that it was true to your soul, right? So, you know, there, there, the, the revelation that something you might do, and I think this gets back maybe the jewel boxes, right? Where the, just that beautiful resin, sort of sexy surface, all that work to it. That there was a moment where you thought, you know, maybe this is it because the, this is sort of both feeding my soul, but it's also super duper attractive. And, um, you, you know, I, I think that when you, and I don't mean you, but I think when an artist gets too caught up into that thinking about, oh, that money thing, that thing that's going to do it, then they lose touch a little bit. And I think that you've never lost that. And I think those jewel boxes were amazing. And I think you just kind of got bored with them and moved on to something else. Like that is just the restlessness that you have. Um, and I think it's, it's admirable. And I hope that you continue on that because there's always something new and exciting that comes out. Um, and, you know, earlier today you were showing me some figurative, maybe some forms that you were thinking about incorporating it. You don't know where they're going. I don't know where they're going. I don't care. I'm really interested. You know, I was making fun of it to a certain degree, but only because it seemed different to me from the work that you do. But I think you always, you've never let that get in the way of trying something new. And I think by the end of it, whatever happens with those forms that you're working on, they're going to look like your work. And that's cool, as it should be. So 
um, you know, I, I don't think there's any other um, path that, you know, as a, at your sort of artistic journey needs to take that, that you're not already on. So, um, I, you know, I, I, and I think about, this is in the essay that I wrote in, in for one of your catalogs about the towers. I'll never forget your enthusiasm about this new form that you have made. And you, and you need to me to come take a look at it. And it, it was a rainy day, and, and this thing was, uh, you know, 20 feet tall or 15 or whatever it was under a tarp. And, and it was crazy raining, it was dark, we had a flashlight, we went inside this thing, and you were saying, isn't this cool? And I was like, it is cool, but I am wet, and this is weird, and I don't even really see it. But, but the enthusiasm and the passion that you had around that was palpable, right? And I think that, like, it's so rare to find artists that can really um, sort of let their emotions and their intuition run, um, and it's to be celebrated. That was a fun moment, though. Like when, when, you know, you shine the flashlight up the tower, and I was like, you can only see this much of it, but suddenly you saw how big it was, right. and you got that 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 sense of wow, it, it, you're you're this close to something, and then you see the scale, and you're like, wow, that's that's pretty amazing, and it was like the Northwest environment. You're like crawling through tarps and strange structures, and 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 uh, you know trying to find your way through this maze and then finding this this lush jewel surface hopefully that translates into beauty and um, immortality and, and a spiritual awakening and, and, and all that embodies you know kind of all this magic that we have in this context I, I thought that, that was really fun and I appreciated you you know you coming by and in, in indulging me in, in this in this fantasy, I guess. <laughs> well, but it wasn't just a fantasy. I mean, you built those towers. You know, you you built several of them, and you know, I saw them in your gallery in Seattle, and they were majestic. So I thought it was pretty cool. You even played with video, right? So this is another sort of iteration of Alan's sort of restless creativity, where at some point you were sort of moving the work into video and doing a mixed media kind of thing, and I think. Again, you know, whether that ends up continuing in your career or it was a thing that you tried for that one period, it doesn't matter, right? It, what matters is that you had a vision and you went for it. You didn't ask, you didn't ask your dealer, you didn't ask other people. You said, I know that I want to do this and you did this. So I think that's awesome. I have a question for you, which is how do you think the studio is going to change your work? That's a great question. Um, I mean, in a way, I, I hope it... It, it doesn't change it too much. Um, but I have tried to, like you say, ask questions and try to find the answer in a literal way. Um, I, I work through an idea, try, you know, trying to, trying to understand, you, you, try, you, you try to find a, a, a fantastical animal and you try to track it and find it and understand its motivations and how it you know, goes about its life and, and really work through the, the mechanics of it. And whether it's a painting or a sculpture or a video project, I mean, I, I, I try to get these things to uh, make sense to me in some way. So how does the physical space, I mean, I felt like the other space, I did a lot of work in that little tiny, tiny house. And I, crazy operations all over the place. And it was really pr a productive place for me, and I celebrate that, but at the same time, I kind of wanted something a little more organized, a little bit cleaner, a little bit bigger, a little bit more well-designed. Um, so hopefully um, this you know, trajectory has, has, has a point, um, has a, uh, there's a reason why this, the, this move in this space can kind of have an intersection and have a, 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 a positive force in terms of making the work you know better or making the work more powerful or communicate better or or have it um, you know the work self actualize in a way that makes more sense. Um, so. The, the, the journey I've been on to try to make a, a space reflect 
some of these ideas. I think it's a, a, a maturing process. Um, I mean, I guess we all want to get, you know, more organized or, or, or... Well, I'm thinking about, you know, there's a separation now, right? So, I mean, we may be in a building that's next door to the house that you live in, but there's separation, right? So the situation you were alluding to a moment ago where you, this crazy house where art was everywhere and art making was everywhere and the basement was crazy and it was all your house. So you lived, breathed, and lived, you know, this experience of being immersed in the work that you do, which has its benefits, right? But there's also something really nice about having a separation, right? So you wake up, you make a cup of coffee, you can sort of, you know, give yourself some space from the work that you do. And I don't know that that's an advantage or not, it's just a different working method. But you are now experiencing a situation where this beautiful large studio that you have, that you can have a separate room, right, for where you do the resin work, and storage. Um, and it's not, you're not living upon paintings upon paintings because it's all in one place. And I imagine it's just sort of created that um, sort of different working environment that, that may or may not be beneficial to the work, but it sounds like you're excited about it. I think just, you know, in a, in a level of health, you know, not living in the dust and fumes may sure. allow me to live a little longer so I can make more work, <laughs> um, you, know, uh, you know, practically. But I think there is, I, 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 I was conscious about trying to separate the living structure from the work structure and having this kind of a, a spiritual sacred space of, of work. And it, it wasn't about having my, my life or my relationship or my, you know, being alive in that space. This is purely a temple of art making. Yeah. And there's no, there's, you know, I don't have other aspects of life that are, uh, can contribute or pollute it. It, it just, it, it just, it's more um, specific to art making. And I'm hoping that that gives me a certain clarity. It, it, I hope it gives me a certain um, uh, more longevity, as I said, but also, um, kind of a cleaner throughput from the original idea to the fruition of the final piece. Like there's a, a, a really substantive and um, intellectual underpinning and a, a very deliberate building towards that final piece. And so, you know, I'm just kind of getting back to yeah. understanding what, what, yeah. I, what I'm trying to get to. And um, it was really nice to be immersed. It was really nice to just swim in that art thing and just be the art. And, you know, having, you know, Jackson Pollock standing in the painting and being part of the painting and dropping his cigarettes and, you know, spilling beer on the painting. I mean, it's all about, you know, swimming in that, but it's nice to have it separate. It's, it definitely is nice to have it um, have a focus, and it's not about uh, other things. So it's it, it's I'm trying to build a, a a temple to this experiment. Well, and I think also you know to, to sort of extend that metaphor in a way that the, you know we took a walk around the, the grounds here, right? You've got a larger property than you had before, and every sort of corner of this property is is planted with something wonderful, right? So it's it's the grapes, it's the hops, it's the I, I there's some, I can't even remember all the strawberries that you've got going on, right? So you have a lot that's happening here that's also, you know, arguably part of being an artist and being a creative person. It takes time. It takes regular upkeep. This is something that's sort of new to your Right. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know if that feeds your soul and helps you. Do, do you think there's any correlation between that sort of new part of your life and the work that you make? Do you see any connection to that? Or is that just sort of something you do with the side? Well, I think, I think it, it is part. You know, having a you know, growing plants or being interested in the garden uh, is, I think it, it, it it kind of retains part of my soul of, you know, uh, nature and, and, you know, regrowth and healing and, and trying to, um, 
So yeah, I mean the architecture and the and the plantings, I feel like is is part of. Um, I guess it's extending the art out into the environment, into the into the garden, mm -hmm. and trying to make you know these buildings, the structures, and the the inside studio, the outside studio. Try it is. You know, it, it's still no matter what I do, I, I'm trying to envelop the space in art, you know, but hopefully in a more, uh, in a way that makes sense, in a way that it's a little bit more, um, that works better. That, you know, I guess I'm, you know, I think about the, this, uh, the, this idea of, of um, controlled chaos, right? The idea of, of wild things that grow on their own, but you still have, you know, you have this section is for this, this section is for that, right? There's a whole idea and, and philosophy around gardens, right? Sort of that, again, that sort of untamed, but tamed kind of um, landscape, right? So that you are still sort of cultivating this. It sort of feels both wild and also controlled at the same time. And, you know, again, I think that's wonderful. Maybe a manifestation of just the way that your brain works and the way that you see the world. And that you're creating this sort of living environment that is embodying who you are as an artist and who you are as a person. I think that, again, if an artist is true to their self, then the work that you do is coming out of who you are as a human being. And so that sort of energy and control that you are wrestling with as a human is also expanding upon itself in the architecture and the landscaping and and every the decor in the house everything that's there is just true to yourself so keep it up buddy i like the way you put those things so well thanks so much for coming all the way to the studio all the way from Tacoma. and i really appreciate you coming by and it was great to talk to you and you know just keep that dialogue going i hope we can continue to have great conversations and, and keep our friendship going. So, um, thanks. My pleasure. All right then. Peace out, bro.